Greetings, dear friends! I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Volvo S81. The engines are the same, but taking into account the earlier release of the model, an unsuccessful Italian throttle well is more common. The likelihood of meeting a Volkswagen diesel is no longer zero, and the oldest cars have already overcome the barrier of half a million kilometers and sometimes have even gone through a major overhaul. The extremely rare turbocharged 2.4 is also found on the S80 many times more often, but in fact it differs little from other motors in its series. The inline 6 is a real exclusive here. These chain motors have worked well on the Volvo 960 and have changed little when installed under the hood of the brand's new flagship. Versions B62-94S with 201 horsepower, 1999-2001 slightly more reliable than almost the same 193 horsepower B62-94S2 engine produced in 2001-2004 due to a slightly simpler control system. The service life of the main engine component is impressive, as is its maintainability. The chain is not internal, but the resource of 200 to 150,000 km can be considered more than sufficient by today's standards. However, when buying an old car, it is worth listening to the chain sounds during a cold start. They may be considerable cost ahead. And do not count on particularly impressive acceleration dynamics. It will not be there. Turbo 5s are faster and more economical, inline 6s are good in sound, traction and simplicity. And the resource such an engine may not require serious work, except for replacing chains. Up to a run of 500,000 km, which means that this is one of the most reliable motors. A turbocharged version of the 272 horsepower engine has a slightly reduced working volume and is much more demanding in operation. Untimely replacement of oil and spark plugs, air leaks due to damage to the intercooler and the intake track quickly lead to fatal overheating for inline sixes, turbine and catalyst failures. But paradoxically, with the exception of radio thickness, endurance doesn't change much. The engine also remains one of the most resourceful. It's just that the cost of service is growing noticeably. The main problems with the six-cylinder engines on the S80 have to do with the gearboxes, not the engine themselves. And the most common trouble that disables a reliable motor is cooling system failures, primarily due to bad radiator fans and occasionally due to pump and thermostat failure. It remains to add that many 2.4 engines from the factory are equipped with gas equipment. But usually these are versions of poor compressed gas, and not liquefied, as in the bulk of cars in our country, and rebuilding the system can be unreasonably expensive. If you find traces of installed gas equipment under your hood, don't be alarmed. This doesn't necessarily mean working in a taxi and the like. Just at one time it gave significant tax benefits to the owners, in addition to actually saving on fuel. This part should be titled Automatic Transmission and its 33 troubles. 5-speed and 6-speed manual transmissions are traditionally reliable, as in the transmission as a whole. Even the all-wheel drive system is not particularly problematic. But this, alas, cannot be said about the automatic transmission. Machines made before 2001 placed with problems on a regular basis and guaranteed. But after 2003, the resource of the boxes has grown to the to, and the reliability has increased. Unfortunately, most of the cars are equipped with automatic machines, so I can only advise you to carefully check the automatic transmission, whether it has been replaced with a contract one, better than the electric version, whether the oil has changed and what version of the well body and firmware is on your car. But together with the 6-cylinder icing engines, it didn't fit under the hood. A 4-speed GM 4T65 transmission was installed here, which in general performed well under the hoods of American road cruisers, including those with V8 engines. And this is not only front-wheel drive cars, because the automatic transmission was originally intended for cars with a longitudinal engine arrangement. But that worked well with the low-speed V6 and V8 low-speed engines in the US, didn't perform well in turbocharged turn zero version. Firstly, the vein oil pump of the box didn't lack high revolutions, especially when combined with dirty oil and hot oil. Second, the drive chain stretched quickly on the T6 due to the high torque. The insufficiently effective cooling system of the box also added problems to the piggy bank. Overseas, the automatic transmission usually relied on a separate radiator, and the heat exchanger in the main radiator helped with its role much worse. And because all of these factors, four steps in combination with inline sixes on the S80, soon began to be afraid like fire because during active driving they broke down quickly and there were a few specialists in our overseas unit, especially on Volvo services. But oddly enough, this box is one of the very easy to repair and spare parts are relatively inexpensive. Unfortunately, now the popularity of the T6 plus 4T65 bundle has been undermined in addition to high taxes on an old and inexpensive car. And there have been no problems with servicing the automatic transmission for a long time. You can both strengthen it and improve cooling. The masters are familiar with all its troubles and know how they are solved. The suspension doesn't cause any particular trouble, its design is quite simple and successful. The front struts have a resource of at least 60-100 thousand even on bad roads. 
thanks to the successful design of Anthers. The front levers also didn't disappoint. The weak point of the front suspension until 2003 remained the bolt joints, but they are changed separately and it is unlikely that the original ones are still on the car. They were distinguished by a small resource and often failed with runs up to 30,000, which by the way caused the owner's fair indignation and is still sometimes considered a disadvantage of the car. But the part was replaced long ago and the original supports of the new model last many times longer. Often cars produced after 2004 still have original suspension parts in excellent condition. The rear suspension is more expensive to repair. There is a multi-link, but its resource is no less. It is frankly expensive to repair only the Nivomed suspension with adjustable shock absorbers and the function of maintaining the level of the body. But given the high price of original spare parts, most often it is changed to a conventional suspension during repair. In practice, the difference in comfort and controllability of the cars turn out to be small. The steering wheel on cars up to 2003 can please with a slight backlash. The reason is not the most successful steering rack and the accumulating gaps in the steering column. In addition, for the jury style rail, the steering rods are rather weak. They can start to play with runs less than 50,000 and this also affects the comfort of the steering. After 2004, a new steering rack was installed on the cars with different rods. The new mechanism is more reliable and not prone to backlash accumulation. Another weak point is the power steering pump, which doesn't tolerate pressure surges and is prone to leaks. Wheel bearings are weak, with hard operation they most often do not withstand more than 100,000 km and the bearing itself turned out to be sealed, therefore, if the city parts are forced, it may fail due to corrosion. The rich equipment of most cars is quite consistent with the level of the model, there were almost no extra budgetary configuration, which the German giants so loud to please in the 90s. The quality of the leather and fabric is to the envy of other mother of other Mercedes except perhaps two artificial wood, and on the very old cars and even those that have worked some somewhere in the city administration, the state of the seats will be far from ideal. The width of the cabin and the amount of the space for rear passenger make the car a competitor not even to the E-class but to other F-class cars, and the comfort here is quite representative and not business. If the car is in good condition, then in terms of smoothness and noise level, it suppresses all competitors in class by head. Unfortunately, these machines have been used for many years as traveling cars, and one can only dream of perfect condition. But they retain their fairly bright character to the last. Serious problems can only be expected from cars manufactured before the thousands. There were a bunch of troubles in the form of bad door seals, problems with the climate control system, power windows, and many other small things that eventually begin to poison the life of the owner. This is not to say that something breaks down seriously and expensively, but the car of the first year of production turned out to have too many damn components, primarily in the part of service electronics and in the engine control system. The body itself is perfectly painted, made of galvanized steel and therefore reluctant to rot. The fossey, even on aged cars, are well localized. Of course, there is already rust, but it sits under the rubber bands of the seals and in the places of contact between plastic and metal. It is necessary to check the car, but on the other hand, these are relatively easily fixable problems. If the area of corrosion sensors is large, then this is either a car from southern Norway or it simply had an accident, burned or so on. In short, in any case, it is worth abandoning such a copy, there were enough alive ones. The rather high cost of small bodywork often forces the owners to restore the car using the bypass technology, even in case of minor accidents, so that the cars on which they frankly saved are clearly visible. On this information about the problems of the Volvo S81 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.